the finance bill of 2024-2025 that was submitted to the National Assembly for consideration by the Finance and uh, National Planning Committee, which has since had a very robust engagement with Kenyans. We, as the National Assembly, through our parliamentary committee, we have listened to Kenyans through that robust public engagement as stipulated by our constitution in the form of public participation. And we take this opportunity to tell the country that we have listened to you. We have heard you. And the committee has briefed the parliamentary group on the proposed changes that they have proposed to the finance bill of 2024-2025 that capture many of the issues that were raised by stakeholders during the public participation. And we have been able to engage on all those and agreed with the executive under the able leadership of His Excellency the President. I will now invite our chair, the very able chair of our Finance and National Planning Committee, the member for Molo, constituency in Nakuru County, the Honorable Kuria Kimani, to take us through the brief of what has been agreed on, on the changes proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader of Majority, Your Excellency the President, and all Kenyans watching us this morning. When we started the public participation in the Finance Bill of 2024, we did make a promise that that public participation would not be an exercise in futility. We have listened to the view of Kenyans, and we are all in agreement that there are two things that we must do. One of them is that we need to protect Kenyans from increased cost of living, and therefore the proposed 16% VAT on bread has been dropped. To support, again, on uh, reducing the cost of living, we are doing something about uh, vegetable oil so that we do not make it expensive for Kenyans. Transfer of mobile services is a key concern to many Kenyans, and therefore, again, we have proposed that we do not have any increase on taxation or mobile phone transfer. We have seen uh, in the recent past the, the proposals that you've made on such deductions on SHIF and housing levy has added a loan, on especially on salaried Kenyans, and therefore we have proposed that those such deductions now be allowable to pay, so they will not be an additional pay on those. We all agree that environment conservation is a key concern. The fact that you've had a drought and a few months of floods and our drainage clogs, we have agreed that we need to make a good decision about how to protect our environment. And that is what the wisdom on the introduction of eco levy. However, imposing this on locally manufactured goods would again increase the cost of those locally manufactured goods in the country and stand at risk of making them not competitive in the East African market and globally. Therefore, this eco levy will only be chargeable to imported finished products. And therefore, all locally manufactured items, and especially including diapers and sanitary towels, will not be subject to eco levy. We must make sure that we become a manufacturing country and not a trading country. And therefore, the imposition of this only on imported finished products makes our locally manufactured products more marketable to the, uh, not just reducing the price, but also making them affordable uh, to even export. On the VAT threshold, we, we have proposed in our amended report to increase that VAT threshold from 5 million shillings to 8 million shillings. Therefore, small and medium, term, uh, small and medium enterprises that have turnover of less than 8 million shillings do not therefore have to register for VAT. On ETIMS, we have had uh, farmers, avocado farmers being asked to, pro to give uh, ETIMS receipts. We've had mamambogas who do their supplies to hotels being asked to register for items. We have proposed that this, these people be given exemption on items registration, and, they, uh, uh, and, and especially for those farmers and those small businesses that have t a turnover of below one million shillings. We have had the conversation about eggs and onions and potatoes. 
So what you've done to protect our poultry farmers, our potato farmers in Nyandarwa and Molo, and protect our onion farmers, we have uh, proposed excise duty only on imported uh, table eggs, imported onions, and imported potatoes. This makes our, our, our onions, our eggs, and our potatoes more marketable to us and the region. To support the fight against illicit brews in the country, we have proposed a change in, in excise duty to changing it from a, a volume to, uh, to alcohol content. Therefore, those, malf uh, uh, those alcohol manufacturers that are producing alcohol very high content will now be required to pay higher duty uh, because based on the alcohol content and those uh, making alcohol of lower content now will pay less uh, duty. To support our pension contributions, because one day we will all retire, we are now increasing the amount of uh, uh, taxable pensions from, uh, we are now increasing the amount allowable for tax exemption for pension contributions from 20,000 shillings to 30,000 shillings. So this is a big win for our pensioners. So we are moving our pension schemes to exempt, exempt, exempt. It is exempt at contribution and exempt when you receive uh, your, your, your your pension from 20,000 to 30,000. Yes, a month, per month. It's important to say this per month. Uh, we have also been appraised of the money that is allocated for junior secondary school to hire all the intern teachers into permanent and pensionable uh, terms.